John Blacher is product planning manager for Yamaha's North American snowmobile division. Recently, we sat John down in an effort to ask him questions aimed at getting at the root of Yamaha's motivation for building the all new triple cylinder Genesis turbocharged snowmobile power plant. But what really piqued our interest in turbocharged engines was the mountain market. You know we're a dedicated four-stroke company for the most part, other than the utility division. And uh, the mountain market's been dominated by two-strokes, about 90, 95%. But the challenge with the mountain two-stroke sometimes becomes durability. So we wanted to find an answer to that at high elevation, a four-stroke that was obviously durable, but could also make the power. The benefits of high elevation for turbocharging really outweighed the benefits of supercharging, which would have been more a sea level snowmobile. Obviously, there were specific development targets for this all new turbocharged engine. Let's drill down and find out what some of those goals were. So we really had three primary development targets for this engine. Obviously, power and torque, that's the one we would increase the power of the vehicle. And the second one and the most challenging one was throttle response. Turbocharged systems, it's very, very difficult to get accurate and quick throttle response. You've got a system in the middle. And the third really was um, high elevation automatic compensation for elevation changes. John was not shy in expressing the cooperation that existed between Arctic Cat and Yamaha in the development of the new turbo. Obviously, Arctic Cat had a big stake in the engine. It powers all the new 9000 series Arctic Cat models. You know, of course, there was tremendous collaboration between Yamaha and Arctic Cat to get this vehicle done. You can imagine the components that the vehicle shares, the intake system, the exhaust system, even the cooling, all the, all the panels on the side had to be designed to allow this vehicle to get the heat out of it. So, you know, the fuel tank was changed. So Arctic Cat had a big hand in designing some components of the system for sure. And without that collaboration, we couldn't have done it. And you know, even though there's a lot of common elements that you kind of have to get together on, we still try and keep some unique differences that we refer to as Yamaha DNA. So we kept our own clutches, pretty important to us. We've got incredible belt durability and lots of history with our clutches. Our clutches are um, strong and durable to high, high rates of horsepower beyond anything we build from the engine. And of course the design, the look and appeal, and that's really important to us, the color and graphics and some of the unique panels that give it that Yamaha feeling. We didn't want one to drive by at 50 miles an hour and no one was quite sure what it was. We wanted to drive by at 50 and say, oh, that's a Yamaha. There are significant differences between the all new turbo Yamaha power plant and previous turbocharged snowmobile engines. There's a lot of detail to drill down on. This engine has some differences to other traditional snowmobile turbocharged engines. I mean, first of all, it's a high revving three cylinder engine. Turbos give the engine a lot of torque, but they do offer a challenge on getting throttle response. And most of that just managing air pressure. Um, everyone asks us, how much boost does it make? Well, that number is almost irrelevant, but the number you're looking for is an absolute number. Or let's say 20, you're shooting for 20. We're breathing about 14 PSI right now, atmospheric pressure. You add six to it, you get a certain horsepower number. As you go up in elevation, that number changes. So you can maintain that 20 PSI absolute number as long as you've got some extra boost. So what we did differently a little bit to manage throttle response, we have three individual throttle bodies. No one else that we know of is doing that. Not even Ferrari's doing that. We also use a bypass system instead of a blow-off valve to atmosphere. So a lot of car companies are doing that as well. That allows us to control the airbox pressure while you're off throttle and keep the little turbine spinning. One of the big challenges with turbines is that as you get off the throttle, it'll stall the compressor and RPM of the compressor comes down. And because that compressor has some mass, you get back on the throttle. Before you get boost coming back, the compressor has to re-spin up again. So we used a very small turbocharger, but we made it really, really efficient. It's a little bit strange, but this fall on the snowmobile consumer show circuit, Yamaha was actually promoting horsepower numbers that were greater than what were originally released for the new turbo engine. 180 horsepower is what we were told the motor produces, and yet we have seen claims, and Yamaha standing behind them, of up to 200 horsepower. We asked John, what's the real story here? Horsepower numbers, interesting numbers to talk about. Um, you know, if you look in all of our official materials, as soon as you see the number 180. And basically that's the least amount of horsepower this engine's ever gonna make. So whether you're at 4,000 feet or 10,000 feet, that's kind of the number you're really gonna see in the real world all the time and nothing less than that number. Dyno numbers you see in the world, you'll see it's always a corrected peak horsepower number. Engines, when they're dyno, tend to kind of snap the rev limiter for a second and they create a very big number for a short period of time. And then the engine typically drops down a little bit and carries a sustained number. 
So while we say 180 in the brochure, that's kind of the promise to the customer. That's engineering's promise. This engine will never deliver less than 180 horsepower. And anyone who's ridden one says right away, there's no way this is 180 horsepower. I mean, it just puts the boots to anything else that we would have quoted as 180 in the past. So yeah, Dynotech gets a hold of it and they dyno one at 204 and they dyno another one at 211. And those are corrected to sea level numbers in optimum conditions. So we tend not to talk about that horsepower. There might be a banner in a brochure or at a trade show or something, but you won't find it in our official materials. And it's just Yamaha's way in the past. We've always tended to under-promise and over-deliver, but you'll always get 180, and that 180 is a real 180. The arrival of this all-new turbocharged power plant and transmission represents a ginormous investment in tooling and engineering to bring it to the market. This speaks volumes about Yamaha's commitment to the snowmobile business. We wanted John to carve that out for us in detail. This engine represents a huge investment into the snowmobile industry, and we're a little bit fortunate that we have other divisions that can take advantage of parts of it. But yeah, no matter what, this is the only turbocharged version, and that's for the snowmobile business. And so that does represent a huge investment. Manpower, tooling, uh, manufacturing, vendor procurement. And so it's, uh, you know, we're invested because we're very proud to be the only four season Japanese company. We're the only ones that build summer and winter toys. So I think you're gonna see us continue to invest as we move forward. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.